Ah, Andrew. Yeah, dude. So this little heart shows up here, and I don't know why. I don't want it to. Andrew says, I have noticed that the brew pubs in my area that are doing the best have great community engagement. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that's everything, but it's, it's, it's a big part of it. Understanding what your community is, engaging with them well, forming a connection with people through your people, through the people that work for you, right? And then know how to run that business. Mm. My coffee is delicious. I don't know how much I want to be drinking because I do, I, I do have to sleep after I do this. But anyways, next question comes from John Monk on Instagram. Adam, just catching up on your podcast. Awesome and really useful. Thank you. Two questions for you. Question one, what do you use to clean your brewery floors? Mine is epoxy. Two, I have chillers for my fermenters. 500 liters, but no heating function on them with colder winter temps. How would you recommend maintaining temps in the brewery? I don't have a temp controlled environment. I have been thinking about repurposing a one barrel bright as an HLT or hot liquor tank and manually changing over hoses for fermenting and then changing back for crashing. Thoughts, advice? By cold, I mean that my temps drop to between 4 and 15 degrees Celsius. <coughs> yeah, that's pretty cold though, man. Um, but enough to potentially cause problems. Absolutely. So we have a two-parter here for old John Monk. Uh, first of all, uh, what do you do to clean your brewery floors? Uh, we will do uh, a couple of things. Uh, the primary thing that we do these days in the old Sonder Brewing is uh, every day, uh, all uh, work surfaces, floors will get hit with, uh, will get hit with bleach um, and sometimes a foaming agent added to it. Uh, a, a light scrub will, will be applied uh, and then that will be rinsed down the drain. There is also a, uh, a foaming chlorinated cleaner uh, that we sometimes use on floors. Um, but yeah, uh, I have, dude, I've got bleach stains in my clothes now for the first time in my life. It's, it's the first time that I've used bleach, uh, as, uh, something that goes on the floor, but that's what I'm using right now. Um, a foaming chlorinated cleaner from my, uh, brewery, uh, chemical rep and, uh, and straight up bleach, man, blasting it on there with a little foaming, a little foamer added to it and then scrub up and rinse down. So that's what we're doing. As far as your chiller situation, man, that that's challenging. You know, you know, sometimes when we think about an HVAC system or your, you know, your cooling system for your glycol system for a brewery, a lot of times we're thinking about trying to take temperature down on a beer or cap it at a certain point. But you know, there, I, I know I don't think I know anybody. I don't think I know anybody that or too many people at least. I don't have my head. I don't know anybody that has the ability to also heat fermenters as well on the pro side. Um, yeah, I, I think that's a sticking point. You know, when I was at Cartridge, we were in that uh, we were in that beautiful building. Uh, the the Peter's Cartridge factory is is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Cartridge is beautiful. Go in there and see your boy, uh, Big Josh Halper, and tons of windows in there. And during the summer. It's bright and beautiful and hot. And during the winter, man, it gets cold. Uh, we do have some uh, heating units in there, but you have to run them really high. Like in order to maintain, see, because what you're running into is you're running into an, a, a situation where your ambient temperature is actually dragging down your fermentation temperature. That is not a good thing. If you want a beer fermenting at 68 degrees and ambient is tearing it down to 62 uh, you can have a host of things go wrong, right? You can have that yeast get sluggish, not want to finish that ferment out. They just want to flock up and go to sleep down in the bottom of the tank. It can be an issue when that things like that happen. You can have uh, fermentation byproducts left in the beer, whether that be uh, green apple acid aldehyde. Uh, 
butter, diacetyl, right? You can have those things in there. Um, and then the sluggish fermentation stuff, right? You don't want that. As far as being able to hook up something to heat the tank, first of all, it sounds like a lot of work. Um, and I mean, maybe, maybe you can make it work. I, I'll say this. I'm not the guy to be doing that because I don't have the, I'm not like the, the do it yourself, re-rig a tank type guy and, and everything like that. Um, but I mean, you could try it, dude. I mean, especially since you don't have any ability to heat that room otherwise, because my primary advice would be is to try to, is to try to raise the ambient temperature of that room right whether it be some heaters or whatever um and uh yeah i don't know that that that's a tough one that's a tough one obviously you want to be able to upgrade uh that situation but um yeah i'm not certain how sustainable uh that is what that changeover looks like um and yeah maybe you can maybe you can get by through some cold winter months uh doing something like that but uh it's definitely outside the box uh, thinking, brother. So uh, let me know how that goes. I, I know I didn't have a ton for you on it, uh, but I, I would I would love to know, John, uh, what you end up doing, and if there's uh, if if you're able to find a, a good solution to that. So appreciate your question. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. If you feel as if you got any value out of the video, please like and subscribe. There are also other videos that you can watch. They're gonna maybe be over here, or over here. Appreciate you watching.